their safety should always come first. You can also raise your puppies to have always ridden in the car in a crate. Wait, if there's for, again, it's rare, but if for some reason I had to put one of my border collies in the back seat because maybe there was another dog in the crate or something, they have no, they do not stick their nose out the window. They literally lay down and they go to sleep because that's what they're used to doing in the car. I've driven by people with their dogs perched with their feet on the window that's rolled down and they're looking at. First yeah. of all, that's a hazard. Welcome to another edition of Dog Sense Podcast. I'm Kathy Santo. I'm your host, and I'm here with my co-host, Sarah, who's all the way in Colorado. Hey, guys. All right, Sarah. So speaking of you being in Colorado, this is a topic that you and I both have had personal experience with, and it is traveling with your dog in a car. There's and it's not, it's not even only just like, you know, going from your house to like, you know, the pet store or something like that. Right. It's obviously traveling with our dogs day in and day out, but also doing long road trips, right. Driving from Colorado back to New Jersey to the school where hopefully she stays and never goes back to Colorado. <laughs> One way trip. I like that. And I have a lot of experience with this. Not only going to the vet or back to the to the school, but also with dog shows. And when I was competing in obedience back in the day, I learned a lot, sometimes the hard way, about how to travel with dogs. So there's a lot here. So let's just get started with it and hopefully stay under an hour. (laughs) <laughs> we swore okay. these were going to be short episodes that you could digest we're gonna, quickly. We're going to try, guys. I promise. We're going to try. All right. So let's talk about safety. You see yep. about yourself. You see about your kids. You need to get your dog secure as well. So our choice is a crate. And if you don't have the space for it, we'll tell you another option. But I do love a crate in my car. I will say that I use Crash Proof brands. Mm-hmm. Those are Roughland Kennels, Orion Gunner and Mm -hmm. Vario cage. There might be others I don't know of. Um, The ones that are one piece molded plastic, like Roughland, those are probably the least expensive. I will tell you, I just bought a large one. uh, And maybe it was an extra large and it was like $379, which is when you hear that, you're like, oh, that's a lot of money. But then you think about a vet visit. If your dog was ejected out of the car, if you had an accident, you're like, that's not so much money. You know, that's like a half a night at the vet hospital. Right. Additionally, if you get a crate, you need to secure it. You cannot just put a crate in your car and go on your merry way because if you get in an accident, that mm-hmm. crate is now a projectile. So they have ways you can secure them. So make sure that you do that. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest like pushbacks we get from that from clients is, of course, they're like, oh, but my dog, he loves sticking his nose out the window or he loves like, you know, all those little things where like they're adding human emotions to it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? The safest spot for your dog, if you want, hey, put the crate in your back seat. You can still roll down the window. They can still look out the window, right? That's always an option. Their safety should always come first. You can also raise your puppies to have always ridden in the car in a crate. Wait, if there's for, again, it's rare, but if for some reason I had to put one of my border collies in the back seat because maybe there was another dog in the crate or something, they have no, they do not stick their nose out the window. They literally lay down and they go to sleep because that's what they're used to doing in the car. I've driven by people with their dogs perched with their feet on the window that's rolled down and they're looking at. First yeah. of all, that's a hazard, right? Forget the dog's it's safety. It's not safe. It's a, I'm having anxiety. When the dog <laughs> jumps out, I'm going to hit him or somebody's going to hit him, right? And then you, then it's a car. You know what? Like, do what, you let you, your kids do that? Do you what let you your just kids do that? said? Right. The dog has the paws on the window. I have a client who told me an insane story. You can't make this up. She was walking her dog. Another dog literally jumped out of the car window. It was friendly, but it jumped out of the car window, ran across traffic to come over and say hello to her and her dog. She lifted up her, this is a like 60, 70 pound dog lifted up the dog because she didn't know if it was friendly. And then the dog wound up just like, kind of like it ran over. Then it turned around, ran back across traffic, ran back and jumped back into its car. That exact thing happened to one of my students. She was walking out her driveway and there was a, there's an intersection there and this truck was stopped and his big, really big dog jumped out the window and attacked her dog in her own driveway. We're like, what? I know. Wait. Okay. Now it's story time. We should do this. (laughs) 
so I had a student and he was summering down the shore with his family and he got in the car and he drove with his lab to the bakery. And if you've ever been down the Jersey Shore, there's most of it is like 25 miles an hour. It's like super slow, right? Mm-hmm. So he's getting his bagels and donuts. He's got the radio on, chilling out, dogs in the back seat. He gets home and he goes to get the dog and the dog's not there. <laughs> Oh my God. So he gets back in the car and he retraces his route. There's the dog sitting on the median. There's like a strip of <gasps> like sand oh no. in the middle. Just sitting there like, well, I'm sure he'll be back. <laughs> that is terrifying. He said, oh my God, my wife didn't speak to me for the rest of the week. I'm like, you know what? I thought that leaving the dog loose in a car with the window down was the dumbest thing you did, but telling your wife probably was <laughs> Like I, you put that dog in the car. You're like, dog, we're never going to talk about this again. And exactly. the dog was unharmed and he did get a bagel in process. But yeah, but a lot yeah. of times these stories don't end up like that. They don't oh. wind up with, oh, the dog was fine. Or, oh, the dog got through traffic and jumped back in its car. No. So for those of you, and again, I don't want to be like, so for those of you who don't want to create your dog, you should create your dog. If you genuinely have a dog like a Great Dane who won't fit in a crate or your car is too small for a crate, which again is possible, um, then there are crash tested seatbelts. Brands like Sleepy Pod, I think Roughware has one, I think Kurgo has one. Um, They all have harness and seatbelt attachments where you can still harness your dog in to prevent them from jumping out the window, but then also to prevent them from becoming a projectile if you were to be an accident. If your car rolls and gets smashed, your dog will still be severely injured versus if they were in a crash tested crate, they would be a lot safer. But again, if you don't have the option to put a crate in your car, you can always do a crash tested seatbelt. Yeah, because you're going to keep yourself safe too. Do you know how many people have their dog jump on their lap and they turn the steering wheel and they go into oncoming traffic? Or they're reaching back. What are you doing back there, right? And then they turn the wheel. Like it's, it's just not safe. And small dogs in people's laps Oh, don't go there. Right. Yeah. They fall to the floor and they get under your pedal. Nice. Yes. Right? yes. Or God forbid you get rear ended and your airbag comes out. Now you squish yep. the little guy. Like you don't want that yep. to happen. Some people though are concerned about crates. They're like, Oh my dogs, it's hot. And they're back in the crate. Okay. You know what? You can get those. I think it's called a nuggle or a ruggle. I can't remember. It's like a hose, right? And you clip oh, it yeah, your yeah. AC vent. And then you can just stretch that sucker back to the dog's crate and hook it onto the crate. I use a Ryobi fan. I put a carabiner clip on the dog's crate and I put the fan against the crate and I turn it up on high. It's a battery powered fan and it really helps circulate the air or you can pre-cool your car before you get in there. Right. The yeah. Dog, right. If, and- Obviously, everyone knows this. We don't, you don't leave your dog in a hot car, whether it's in a crate or whether it's in a seatbelt, it doesn't matter, right? If you're in the car with your dog, the AC is on. So you guys should be fine. Right. But if it doesn't get cool quick enough in the back of your car, the fan and the nuggle are great ways to get the AC back there quickly. All right. So next up would then be IDs. Yeah. And so another thing, we're getting really emotional in this podcast. (laughs) Oh my God, the ID thing. Well, also the thing is, is like the, yes, these are worst case scenarios, but the whole, like you're responsible for keeping your dog safe. You have to make these choices for them. You have to make sure that the same way you would a kid, right? You like your kid wears a seatbelt. They ride in a, in a, in a, in one of those safety seats, right? Like all of you do all these things to keep them safe. (laughs) You don't even know what they're called. I I don't have children. I have puppies. I've dogs. I was like one of those things you put them in, you put the the harness on them. (laughs) No, it's a seatbelt. A car seat. It's called a car seat. Oh, the car seat. The children's car seat, not a safety seat. Sorry, guys. I don't have kids yet. <laughs> I like that you said yet. <laughs> I don't have kids ever. Okay. So let's go through the things that you know. You probably know that your dog should have a microchip, right? That's great. Uh, make sure the ID is up to date on that. That is the same place that you live, that you've updated everything. And some people don't, some people get dogs from rescues and they don't update the microchip. And so the dog is from Tennessee and they're in New York and then the dog gets lost and they're calling Tennessee. It's not going to work out. So make sure all that information is current. Next, Mm -hmm. I want you to get a dog collar and have it embroidered with the word reward and your cell phone. Now Mm -hmm. we don't want the dog's name on it because we don't want anybody to keep your dog. Because right. if you have a super cool dog who's really well trained and these people are giving it commands and it's listening, they're like, you know, we've always wanted a dog, especially in this climate where getting a dog is kind yeah. of hard. So they've got this really cool 
cool dog who listens to commands, they might not give it back. Now, if your dog is not cool, put his name on it and change the phone number. <laughs> yeah, my dogs have their name on their collars, obviously. No one wants my dogs. <laughs> Yeah, Sarah's phone number is on it as well, but it's one number <laughs> off. So if you ever find Jack, she's not taking it back. Oh, poor Jack. No, um, I'd have to go get Jack because no one would be able to catch him. <laughs> that's right. They'd go to now. Oh, that's a good point, Sarah. So let's yeah. say your dog is fearful yep. or aggressive. That little collar is not going to help anybody because they're not going to get near it. So there is a good use for one of those body vests. And yeah. They make them and you can get them to say service dog, but you're not going to do that. You can get them with Velcro on it and they can make a patch and the patch can have your cell phone number, make yep. it in big letters so somebody can see it from a distance. That way, God forbid, traveling, get in an accident or you open the car door and the dog goes flying out before you get the leash on him, which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I have a comment. Yeah, so let's just yeah. go to that. Yeah, so okay. let's just go. So when your dog is riding in the car, they should also always be wearing their leash, even if, as long as they're not going to chew on it. Even in the crate, my dogs wear their leash and our leash is also embroidered with do not, it says do not pet, but it has my phone number on it as well, because God forbid they got loose, something like that. First of all, the leash is already on so that a stranger doesn't have to reach for their collar. Even if you have a nervous dog, right? A ner- this happened the other day. There was a loose dog and no one could catch it because it was terrified. If that dog had been wearing a drag line, I was able to get close enough to it where I could, if I, I could have stepped on that leash and caught it versus trying to catch it by its collar. It's never going to happen, especially if it's nervous. It's not aggressive. It's nervous. It's scared. So when traveling with your dog, you should always have a leash on in the car. And if you're going to do the body vest, with mm-hmm. your number on it, it should be on in the car as well. I yep. have a student who's like, you know, I've been getting calls lately, like from guys. Is they like, hey, like I saw you hiking with your dog. They're getting your cell phone number off the vest. <laughs> so, Which is ridiculous. Yeah, just that may happen to you, but it's okay. It's, it's better than having a lost dog and not being able to cover it. But it could be a speed dating thing too. So if you're looking for a companion, you, you know, you having go. that on your dog, you might want to put other things on it too, like single 26, <laughs> yeah, whatever. So that's another episode. All right. So that's it for the ID. Oh, I also yeah. on my crates there. I do the clear plastic sheet cut. Well, I don't know what they're called that you put paper in them and your notebook. Right. And it's a binder sheet. Right. Anyway, yeah. I have a form and that form tells you everything you need to know. Because if God forbid I'm in an accident and I'm not conscious and I can't tell you what I want for my dogs, this says it all. It says all the people you should call on cell phones. It says I will pay for their emergency care. It says I would mm-hmm. rather pay for them to be boarded in a facility than put in a shelter until somebody can get them. And my students who are police officers love this. They're like, Everybody should have one. And so if your dog is not traveling in a crate, what you can do is you can put it in the glove box in an envelope and big red letters, dog 911 info, stick it in your purse, stick it in your wallet. Just give first responders a way to get people to come and take care of your dog because it's far better than having them trucked away to wherever they're going to go. Yeah, absolutely. And we actually, we have a PDF for you guys that has all that information on it. We'll put that in the show notes for you guys so that you can make them as well for your dog too. Now, besides all the terrible things that can happen that we're trying to help you prevent, there are some other things that you should do that don't involve tragedy. And the first thing is, well, this could be tragic, is bring some bottled water for your dogs. If you're changing towns even, forget states, your dog's tummy, if it's sensitive, might be used to the water that comes out of your tap. So a nice couple bottles of distilled water is going to prevent any tummy upset. You should also talk to your vet about any medications you might need. Um, If your dog, again, if they have an upset tummy, maybe your vet wants to give you a prescription for something that would help them if that happened on your trip. The other thing is if you're going to hotels that are pet friendly, please, please, please have somebody else hang out with your dog while you go in the room, get a flashlight, use your phone, get on your hands and knees and look under the bed, by the end table, and in the bathroom. Because housekeeping often misses pills that Mm -hmm. fall, right? They can fall under the bed, housekeeping is doing their thing, but they don't actually see it. Maybe it's under a weird spot and the vacuum didn't get there. We have found, especially when I was dog trialing, found so many weird and dangerous things under the bed, next to the bed stand, in the bathroom. And we've always had this protocol and it has saved us so many times. 
Yeah, only a thing with hotels too is if your dog is crate trained and you don't have the issue of the dog then breaking out of the crate, bringing <laughs> a soft crate can be really, really valuable when you guys are in the in the hotel room. Because I, it's a pain in the butt to have to lug my big rough land kennels from the car all the way up to the hotel room. So I get the soft crates that can fold up. My dogs are adults, they're fully crate trained so that if I need to run out and grab food or I have to go hop in the shower or something, I can put the dogs in one of those soft crates and know that they're safe. They're not gonna, they're not gonna get into trouble. They won't, again, go looking underneath the bed or searching for things if I need to shower real quick. So the soft crates in the hotel rooms can be really, really valuable too. And Sarah knows her dogs won't eat out of it, a while ago, I did have a dog who would eat out of yeah. it, like super fast, like just no, 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 no. And he'd be yeah. out really fast. And then you're sad because the crate was expensive and your dog just destroyed it. And so if you know that you can get a wire crate that folds yeah. up, but we will want to stress that soft crates, fabric crates and wire crates are not the safest option for a car because they offer zero right. protection if you get in an accident. And we don't like to be like, oh my gosh, let's talk about the terrible things and scare you, but we want to prepare you. Also, I would say print out a recent picture of your dog, have like 15 or 20 copies and have those clear binder sheets because God forbid your dog gets lost in an area where you're not familiar with. Right. You want to have something you can instantly post. And I know you'll do social media too, which is awesome, but you should have physical things to put somewhere so people can see and look for the dog. And it's not good enough that you have that dog's picture on your phone because what are you going to do? Show everybody your phone? Like you're not going to see people. You got to put stuff up that they can tangibly see and a number on it. So I would make a wanted poster and hope you never have to use it. Right. All right, guys. So I think that's everything for traveling in the car with your dog. Kathy, anything else you want to touch on? Not anything that's going to keep us under an hour. So <laughs> we're going to do another episode with more traveling tips. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you have any questions about anything that we went over today, you can always reach us by email info at kathysanto.com. Uh, please like, rate, share, subscribe our podcast to any friends or family who you think may benefit from listening to the information. Um, we want to help spread the word so we can continue to create an awesome community of dog lovers and learners. All right, guys, enjoy the traveling with your dog and keep everyone safe. And we hope that you, we hope that you never have to run into any of the issues that we've heard from students and everything. And we hope that this podcast episode has helped you guys kind of prepare best for when traveling with your dog. All right, guys, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.